Yes, yes, peeps. What's good? How's everyone doing? As you can see, I'm in my hotel room here in Brentwood. Um, this is fight camp week three, the final fight camp. I've just had a bit of brekkie. Um, I was going to take my camera downstairs to film, but I don't know. I wouldn't want to be filmed eating breakfast, put it that way. Um, who did I see down in breakfast? I saw Lyndon Arthur was down there. Obviously, he's here with Zelfa Barrett, who fights on the card. Zelfa Barrett actually was supposed to fight next week in Mexico, but he's fighting here, so he's in shape. I think a lot of people said he's a uh, a last minute addition. He is a last minute addition to the card, but he's in shape. Um, Cash Farouk is down there as well. Cash Farouk fights a guy called Louis Castillo from Mexico. I'm always scared when these Mexicans come over, but he fights a guy called uh, Louis Castillo, who is 28 and 2, uh, 18 knockouts, so a bit of punch and power. But the interesting thing about this Louis Castillo is that um, he's deaf, and I hope no, I don't know if this is the right word to use, but he's mute as well, so he, he doesn't speak doesn't speak and he's deaf and him and his cornerman have a way of communicating. They've been with each other for 10 years. So that's very, very interesting, very interesting story. Um, didn't grow up with his mum or dad, he's been brought up by his grandmother, but he's obviously coming from Mexico, he's had it really, really hard. So this is like a really good opportunity for him. So again, the reason I say that is because you look at the fight card and look, I'm a fight fan just like you guys and you're like, eh, not much on the fight card. There's a couple of interesting scraps on the fight card, you know, a couple of very, very, like Joe Cordina, fights a guy called Joshua Hernandez. Now you look at the record of Joshua Hernandez and you think, mm, but then you look at who he's lost to. He's lost to Chris Colbert, who he lost to when Chris Colbert was 9-0. Chris Colbert is now 16-0 and a very, very highly touted prospect. And he lost to a guy called uh, Monatelli as well, who was 17-0 at the time, who's now moved on, I think, to 18-19-0. and 19 and 0. So you got to look at it. you know, you, you got to look a bit beneath the surface, I think, with some of these fights. Um, yeah, looking forward, I'm going to quickly have a little fresh shape up this bad boy. You know, I've got my own clippers and everything. I even got my look. I bring, I bring everything, you know, I, I don't muck about. I bring my clipper spray, everything. Where's my clipper bag? Don't tell me, okay. No, I've, got I've got the whole pack. I ain't fucking playing around. Proper barber shop here, blood. Proper barber shop. When you you know that's a barber shop when you got that. I got all the levels, everything. So I'm gonna give myself a quick trim, um, pick what to wear, and then we go. The time now is ten o'clock, so I've got to do this quickly. Uh, I need to be um, at fight camp, which is only ten minutes away. By twelve, bit of rehearsal, then we go live. At 2.30, today is the, why am I looking there? Well, I should be looking there. Today, today is the first press conference. Um, I haven't seen Boatsy yet, but he is here. Um, so it'll be interesting to speak to him. So today I'm actually going to interview Boatsy Balotnik. Um, it's Balot, by the way, it's Balotnik, not Balotniks. I just found that out. I'm going to interview Hopi Price, Cash Farouk, and Ray Ford. Is it Ray Ford? Is right. Yeah, Ray Ford, who fights uh, Reese Balotti, which should be a good one as well. So yeah, I'll see you on the other side, peeps. Peace. People, you know what time it is, right? It's time to head over to fight camp. Um, shit, my petrol is low. No surprise, that's how I live. It's bad, it's bad. Um, but it'll get us to fight camp and hopefully get us back. <laughs> um, the time is quarter past 11. I need to be there for 11.30. So you know what? We're even early. For once, I'm a changed man. We're early. Um, I'm excited for this fight, Cam. I am, just because it's the final one. And I'm excited to see Boatsy versus Balotniks as well. I think that's a bit of a test for Boatsy. I think people will look at um, Balotniks' record. Was he 18 and 5? I think he's been stopped three times, two or three times. But um, as a light heavyweight, he's unbeaten. I think he's had seven light heavyweight fights. He's unbeaten as a light heavyweight. So his losses have come as a cruiserweight. So that tells you how big he is. And a lot of people think Boatsy is not a big light heavy. So, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what Boatsy does. This is his, what, second camp with Virgil Hunter as well. I think it takes three, four, maybe five camps with a trainer to really get that, that understanding between the two, right? The way it's just synced up. Um, although Boatsy is very intelligent and Virgil Hunter, obviously, they're clearly a top level coach I think it's going to take more than just two or three fight camps but we'll see um, yeah we'll see obviously we're going over now for the press conference um, I've just been told that I'm interviewing Virgil Ortiz obviously Virgil Ortiz is fighting Cavi Alaskas um, fighting Cavi Alaskas um, this weekend 
loads of fights this weekend then, right? Because we've got Casemiro Rigondo this weekend, or Rigondeau this weekend as well. Shit. And the Premier League is back this weekend. Woo! If you're a sports fan, this must be fucking heaven for you. Yes, yeah, so I'm interviewing Virgil Ortiz. I'm just going to ask him a couple of questions. Nothing, nothing too long. I've never spoken to him before, so this is a real treat. These are the kind of things that I'm really excited about having this job for. Things like this. You get to interview people like Virgil Ortiz. I mean, that's... I mean, bloody hell, that's proper, isn't it? That is proper. Um, yeah, I'm just going to ask him about, you know, the hype around him. Does that add any extra pressure? Obviously, everyone's considering him and Boot Sennis as the next guys at 147. Maybe talk about the progression as well. Like, is, is it a steep progression? Do they think, does he think they're matching him correctly? Um, was it Morris Hooker then Cavi Alaskas? I think that's actually pretty good. But what next if he does get past Cavi Alaskas? And maybe ask him how we felt Cavi Alaskas performed against arguably the best 147 out there in Terence Crawford. So, eh. Just have to kind of just think off, think off the top of my head for these questions. The, the trick for me with these interviews is don't over prepare. I mean, have some stuff, you know, in the locker just in case that the interview goes flat. But don't over prepare because what I've noticed from people that do interviews, not I'm not the best interviewer in a while, but I feel like people, interviewers, have their questions already kind of mapped out and are not listening to the interviewee. Sorry, it's going to get really dark. We're just going under some. Um, some trees not listening to the interviewee it's going to get light now and then it's going to get dark again um so yeah i listen to the interviewee and i go where he goes so whatever he's asking i kind of just flow with him obviously there will be some questions i will have to get out like who do you want next all those kind of very basic boring boxing questions but other than that i just kind of flow with them oh that was my tripod that just dropped yeah, I just flow with them. The weather looks a lot better. I think I say that. I'm looking up now, and there's a big dark cloud in front of us. All right, we're just getting to the door now. Um, yep. Don't think there's any. Oh, there is security. Yep, there he is. Hi, right, boss. How you doing? You're right. Not bad. Not bad. The zone. Yeah. How you doing? You good. Up on the uh, middle grid. Top man. Let's see our backers. Yeah. Face downwards. Okay, okay. Don't go near the grass. <laughs> All right, we just got here. We've parked up and we're in the building. Let's quickly. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I'm fascinated by these alpacas. That's what they're called, right? I think that's what they're called. I should I should know this by now, but I don't. So we get, let's get a closer look at them. big you know so random in it so random I'd love to go on one of these absolutely love it all right let's go um, put my stuff in the bus this is what I've got a couple of options today I have to kind of not match Tony but I don't want to kind of completely clash with what he's wearing either this just won't look right will it all right here we are stepping in for the final week of fight camp. Let's go, weather looks promising. Um, press is gonna happen in a minute over there. We'll go in there in a minute. Just wanna, just wanna get my stuff sort of settled down and then we'll go in. Everyone's here already, doing their bits. Hi people. Hello everyone. Hello peeps. Sorry you're on my camera. Sorry. My behind the scenes vlog. <laughs> Let's quickly drop our stuff. You're not getting away with it. <laughs> and then we'll go. Oh, All right. I'm on the zone bus. All right. Um, I'm just going to drop my stuff. Got a rehearsal. Hello people. Got a rehearsal in about 30 minutes I think. So I can do a bit of vlogging now. Look at that fresh trim I've given myself. Woo! Kind of sharp. Kind of sharp. God damn it. Let's go on top of the bus. Here we go. Here's the view, right? Here's the view. This is it. It's the view, peeps. I think that is Coogan over there. 
over right over there I think that's Kruger it's a nice view though isn't it that's obviously got a change that's the old one that there is um, the fight is change room. Let me show, I've not shown you that actually. Let's go over there and I'll show you that. This is all the back. You don't see all this kind of stuff, do you? This is like proper behind the scenes. This is the, the back of the bus. All right, let's, um, let's see if the fighter changing rooms are open. Last time out, Ali Drew, our presenter on Saturdays, I think she was doing a lot of her pieces from back here. Let's see. Don't know if they are. This is how big the compound is, by the way. I mean, look at this. It's absolutely ridiculous. And it goes back, by the way, look. There's more. I mean, that there, yeah, look, this, look, look at this, by the way. This is still all matchroom. Goes back, all the way back there. That there, you could build easily flats here for, I don't know how much. Yeah? What a joke. All right, here are the changing rooms. Um, I don't know if they're open. Only one way to find out. Nah, locked. Damn. Damn it. Let's get back. I don't think Tony Bellew's here yet, either, to do rehearsals. Might be. That's where um, sort of the press and everyone goes toilet here. Can't go into the house to go for a number one or two, can you? That'd be a bit cheeky. Let's go to the, um, let's quickly go over to the press conference area. See if any, I don't think anyone would have turned up yet. I don't think so. Any, well, who knows? I think they've changed it. That was quick. Then again, I say that's quick. It's just computerized, isn't it? To be honest. Let's um. Let's head over to the, um, to the press conference area. I don't think any of the fighters will be here just because why would you want to come here? That's like 11.30 now, the press conference isn't scheduled until like 2 o'clock or something like that, 1.30, 2 o'clock. Giving it a bit of a clean. That's all changed, obviously. But let's see, a lot of looks has changed. Again, you guys know this is where Chris Lloyd and Darren Barker do their bits from. So we got here. I don't think I've shown you this bit yet. <laughs> so that is London in the distance. It's honestly, it's the craziest size piece of land I've ever seen someone have like obviously I've, it's just it's just ridiculous <laughs> but yeah all right so what, what we'll do now I want to do a bit of rehearsal uh, and then we'll see if we can get anyone to say a few words on camera what's up babes um I've just found a nice little quiet place inside Matrim HQ to do a bit of revision um the time is five minutes to 12, we do a rehearsal in 35 minutes. So just um, looking at a few notes. Again, I don't like to go too deep with the revision. I mean, I like to know, obviously, their record off head and who their trainer is, their last fight, weights, knockouts, etc., etc. possible next opponents and stuff like that. But I, I'm not gonna go back to their first fight unless there's something key in there for me. Um, but for me, like one of the things that are one of my bugbearers is mispronunciations. And there's a couple. There's one kid here that's fighting Michael Mickinson. 
and his name isn't pronounced how it's spelled, or at least not for me anyway. His name is uh, Pajamisav Runovsky. That ain't easy. Um, it's not easy, but I will remember it just because once you remember it, you remember it. But um, in terms of my fights of the night, the fights to look out for, so obviously look the main one, right? Boatsy versus Bolotnik. But I am really, really interested in Raymond Ford versus Rhys Bellotti. Rhys Bellotti obviously coming off a couple of defeats, right? We know those. Um, this is almost kind of a bit of a last throw of the dice for Bellotti. If he doesn't win this, I think he just becomes a challenger and almost a gatekeeper in the division for some people. Maybe a British level gatekeeper or even a European level gatekeeper, which isn't too bad. Um, for Raymond Ford, obviously he's coming off a draw, so it'll be interesting to see what he looks like up close and personal, we're actually going to speak to Raymond Ford as well. And I am uber excited, and I think I mentioned this a bit earlier, I'm uber excited about Joe Cordina versus uh, Joshua Hernandez. Joshua Hernandez has lost three times, and you look at his record and you think, okay, 10-3, and three, and he's taken on Joe Cordina, who's 12-0, and 0, but he's lost to a guy called Chris Colbert, who um, was 9-0 and 0 at the time, who's now 16-0. and 0. Chris Colbert, very, very highly talented. Very, very good prospect. So there's no shame in that loss, and it was a unanimous decision. And then he's lost to a guy called Mialetti. Um, apologies if I'm repeating myself here. He lost that by split decision. Mialetti is now 17 and 0. Don't sleep on it. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's a weird card in the sense that it didn't jump out at me, this card. You look at it and you think, oh, it's not the best way to end fight camp. But I think there's a couple of things on this card that are interesting. That's, that's my own thought process on it anyway. Eddie Hearn has literally just walked past. He might come in again. Um, he's excited about this Louis Castillo fighter as well. Um, I mentioned to you that Louis Castillo is deaf and doesn't speak. Doesn't speak. Um, obviously, the wrong term to use is mute, but if I say that, you guys will understand what I mean. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how he gets on against Cash Farouk. Just because Cash, in his last fight against Espinosa, I think it was, like he had to literally go into every tool in that tool bag to get the win. So it's going to be interesting to see what he does here. He doesn't want those tough fights all the time. But Cash Farouk doesn't really have to punch. You think of his 15, was he 15 and one? You think of those wins, he's only got six knockouts. So he sometimes have to, does have to dig deep in the tool bag. All right, enough of that talk. Um, I'll try and get you some interviews. All right, peeps. We are um, about to head over to the presser. Starts in a couple of minutes. Let's quickly go over. <clears throat> Tenya, do not sleep on this main event. Boatsy versus Bolotnik is going to be a bloody good fight. I'm telling you, it's going to be a good fight. Trust me. Weather's turned a little bit. Look at that crowd. Crowd? Cloud. Um, normally, we like to do our thing from the top of the bus, but I'm not sure. Or underneath that gazebo over there. But we'll see. Judy Murray's here, by the way. Andy Murray's mum. I think she's doing something for Sky Sports. There's the main man, Tony. Oh, nearly tripped. Um. I'm still wearing. Look what I'm still wearing, by the way. Wearing fucking slippers still. All right, let's go. Let's see. Can't we get in that way? Is it shot? Uh, oh no, you can. Well, yeah. Have well, they? Yeah. Let's go. And it just starts to drizzle. Tony, a few words for my YouTube people. Tune in. There you go. Watch Addy, he's amazing. Oh, I like All it. All the boy does is study. He does his stats. He does Thank everything. You. Thank you. He's absolutely fantastic at his job. So tune into his channel. Yes. He's going to catch me every now and again on here because we're going to be working <laughs> together. So uh, yeah, man. Listen, you're Top man, very brother. good at your job, mate. Very Top good. Man. Watch your step and don't fall over. Thank you very much. That's not me being the good man. That's just, That's just telling the truth. That's what I like to hear. There you go. After where's the wood to touch? Shit, better touch wood. On me head, mate. I know. Go on. Hey, you didn't 
I was gonna get you. I was gonna get you. But you handled it very well. You handled it very well. <laughs> Alright, we just stepped in. Just stepped in to the presser. Sophia, boom. Translator again today? Translator again today. Frankie, how you doing, brother? Good. <gasps> Rob Tevitt's back. I didn't know Rob was here. Filming for my YouTube. How you doing, Rob? Not bad, brother. Yes, I am. They've upgraded me. Yeah, I feel like my performance was half decent the other week, so I was like, you know what? Let's get him in the real hotel. This Saturday, we know the background. You were due to fight in Mexico. That card got delayed because it went on to red list as well. Training really and preparing yourself for what looks to be the Kiko Martinez rematch later on in the year in Manchester. But great to get out this Saturday and a much needed uh, trip for you. Eight rounds this weekend. Also, you know, I was working hard. Also, I had Mexico. Back in Mexico. And, uh, you know, the magic can got me here, so I'm just happy to be here. So Appreciate it, thank you. It's been a tough uh, couple of months for you and family. I mean, the passing of your mum has been difficult for you as well. Important to get back to the same the gym and obviously get this eight rounds under your belt before moving into a major fight for your career later this year. Of course, you know, uh, I'm one of the best friends. You know, obviously, moving now. I can't wait to get back to your place. It's hard to walk the line as well. When you're in these kind of fights, you're almost sort of one win away from going on and actually having another major fight as well. For you, I know you've been to Jordan Gill, you know, you've been in those tough fights as well, but as motivated as ever to do the business on Saturday. Yeah, probably more than ever, like you say, uh, obviously, I've been in tough fights, I've been in tough fights, people don't beat me, they're, they're, good, they're good fighters, they're going on to do really good things. So I'm at that level where I now need to push up again, get a win, and like I say, go myself for more bigger fights. I know you always used to rely on your power in there, and as you stepped up and, and boxed those, you know, smart fighters that move and, and raise another one, Jordan Gill, Walsh, those kind of guys, added a little bit more to your game and that experience just giving you a little bit more wing craft now, knowing that sometimes that's not enough to win fights against opposition like this. Yeah, of course, you can't always rely on that. Yeah. We are blessed in this sport to have had so many stories behind fighters, incredible story, Gerard Castillo, actually born deaf and unable to speak, all of his conversations happen uh, through sign language with his trainer. An incredible story that I haven't seen before in boxing. Um, both Gerard and, and his trainer yeah, communicate by their own sign language, not official sign language. And I respect to the, the trainer now, welcome via a translator as well. Um, I've spoken to your promotional team. This is a, a very talented fighter who, with two defeats on his record, both, I've been told, were not really defeats. This is the ultimate opportunity in his career so far. Eh, bienvenidos primero. Ha ah, hablado con el promotor y con todos y dice que es muy talentoso. Okay. That's a wrap, guys. We're done for day one of fight camp. I didn't get to film much, unfortunately. But we are out of here. This is my YouTube. These are my bosses. Bosses. They are my bosses. They kind of order me what to do. <laughs> Take care, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Thank, you. Thank you so much as well, my man. Thank you. All right, let's get out of here, homies. Um, apologies that I didn't get too much. I didn't interview anyone, did I? Which is a bit shit. Sorry. Just so busy today. And then I ended up losing my fucking phone. Found it, obviously, but lost it. <sighs> All right, um, thank you. Tomorrow we'll definitely do a lot more, I promise. We're gonna do way more than this. Cause this was, well, nothing. You know what we're gonna do now though? Go to the hotel and eat. Eat, eat, eat. Um, we just wrapped a very busy day though, peeps. Like, it was super busy. We did like um, the whole show. Then I had to do six interviews. Then I had to do a little bit for Betfred. Eh, it's been busy. All right, we are leaving Fight Camp. 
All right, we are leaving fight camp. Um, I'm very tired. I feel very, very drained. It's been a long week in general, you know. But yeah, I feel a bit tired. The good thing is that the hotel um, put on a buffet. <laughs> I am going to batter, batter with a capital B, that buffet. Like, they're gonna think, where's all this food going? In fact, I'm gonna eat the buffet, go to the toilet, this is a bit too much, and come back. That's how much I'm gonna eat. Like, forget the diet, everything is getting it at this buffet, people. Every single thing. Take care, mate. Um, oh, I'm surprised that the phone is still there. Impressive, because we are going through some sort of obstacle course to get home. All right, let's go. I was actually supposed to go back to Stratford to, um, to get a camera for the Ortiz interview, but I ain't doing that. We're gonna have to do it uh, via Zoom or something. I ain't doing that. But um, it's been a good day overall. A bit stressful, but overall a good day. Again, apologies that I didn't get as many. I didn't get anyone really, did I? As many interviews as I would have liked. It's just, it just got very busy very quickly. Um, yeah, very busy very quickly. I could have done. You know what it is? There, there were some points when like Eddie Hearn, me, Tony Bailey all talking. I could have maybe recorded that, but I felt like it, it would have been a bit cheeky to ask them, do you mind me recording this for my YouTube channel? So, And then it wouldn't have been the kind of conversation you would have wanted, right? So yeah, didn't do that. Sorry. But tomorrow will be a better day, people. Trust me. We're gonna make it a good one. A good one tomorrow. You know what, yeah, I wouldn't mind living in Brentwood, you know. I'm guessing you get a lot of um a lot of bang for your buck out here. The house is I'm guess, it's not gonna be as expensive as London, is it? No chance. But you're not too far from London, like it only takes me 25 minutes to drive. 20, 25? Um, so it's not too far. We were supposed to do a Raymond Ford interview today as well. Um, but I don't know what happened. I don't know if he didn't want to come back and do it. Because we were sort of dragging behind a little bit. So I don't know if he didn't want to do it or couldn't do it. Obviously, look, he's possibly cutting a bit of weight. So the last thing he wants to do is be up and down doing interviews. You know what I mean? Um, I think we are going to do him and Reese Bellotti tomorrow. So in terms of interviews today, today we did... Come on, green. Today we, <laughs> a bit of road rage. Today we did, um... oh, what did we do again? I'm so tired. Cash for Root today. Um, me and Darren Barker just did something. Who else did we do today? Obviously Boatsy, Balotniks, uh, Joe Cordina, Hopi Price. Yeah, we've done a few. I wouldn't mind doing Joshua Hernandez. He fights Cordina. I think that's a live opponent. Like, you know what it is? You know when you like, and I do it all the time, you look at opponents' records and you think, eh, no chance. Until you like see them. You know why I say that? Last week, I said this against about Akib Fia, remember? I said that him versus that Kevin Bell Despino is gonna be a, a real fight. And I think a lot of people are like, eh, but his record is shit. And look, it proved to be a very, very good fight, right? Um, I keep fear has won it by a round and that's debatable that's what I'm talking about like when you see them up close and personal I don't know it makes you think of them a bit different and I remember looking at that um, Joshua Hernandez thinking he might cause um, Joe Cordini a few problems here, you know might uh, especially because Joe Cordini, Cordini sorry, doesn't have doesn't have like one punch knockout power does he to keep him off so I think it's going to get interesting a bit of traffic here you know yeah, coming up to five o'clock, expected. All right, guys, um, I'm gonna go to a hotel, grab some food. Um, yeah, peace and love, everyone. And again, apologies. Apologies.